Hey everybody, welcome back to Phoenix Kitchen where this week we're cleaning out the freezer for a barbecue buffet cookout. Let's look at what we did. All right, so the, for the first time in our life, we ordered a hog directly from a local farm and needed to clean out our freezer. So that's exactly what we did. We got those ribs, a pork belly, a pork butt, and several varieties of sausages out and thawing. Now we only have a 90 gallon offset, not one of these big 500 or 1000 gallon like you'd see at a barbecue joint. So we split this into two cooks. Midweek, we worked with the pork butt. We took half of that and made some special request sausages and got those all smoked and ready to go and wrap that pork butt up. We wanted to make sure this would all be good for the weekend, so we got everything cooled down. You can see the sausage just turned out great. Uh, got nice, delicious juiciness there. These are jalapeno blackberry. They turned out wonderful. So we got the pork butt wrapped up we got the sausages all set aside and then smoking day came for the cookout we start with the beef ribs we're going to go ahead and get those opened up and ready to go now these are pork back ribs we're going to go ahead and pat these dry uh, and then put on a little bit of a binder and get them seasoned up these are not the dino style ribs so it will not take as long for the salt to penetrate so we're able to do this on the morning of the cook instead of doing it the day before like I would normally do. Uh, we'll get these things. I'm just using a little spray oil to help the seasoning adhere. We're going to go ahead and hit these with kosher salt uh, because these are beef ribs. We're going to go ahead and hit this with a pretty impressive amount of salt because we want that little bite. We want it to really sink in and season the meat thoroughly. Once we've got this in, we're gonna season this with our brisket rub. All right, so when we put on our brisket rub, we wanna make sure that we get top, bottom, and all of the sides. Uh, what we're gonna do is use some of the seasoning that ends up on the board to get the sides by simply rubbing them through it. That way we're not wasting seasoning. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind, if you notice down in the description, the recipe for the brisket rub, we do not use salt in that brisket rub. We put on the salt separately. It's the first thing that goes on, and we want it to have a chance to absorb into the meat, and then the rub goes on top of that. Uh, this brisket rub in particular uses flavors like uh, dried bourbon and uh, ground espresso, along with our salt, pepper, garlic, um, it's a very savory um, with just a hint of sweet. It's really, really outstanding on beef. So we're going to use this on the beef rib. We'll get these seasoned up and then look at our pork ribs. All right. So the beef ribs are over getting happy, nice and seasoned. We're gonna to start to work on our three racks of pork uh, spare ribs. We buy the spare ribs because they are the cheapest to buy per pound. And then we trim those up and cook them, uh, you know, St. Louis style, because we want a nice even cook without little pieces burning. We wanna get it nice for presentation. Uh, and we do not waste any of this meat that we're cutting off. So as we go through the trim, the first thing that we took off, this is actually the pork skirt steak. So if you've ever had beef skirt steaks made into fajitas or whatever, you know it's an extremely delicious cut of meat. Uh, on pigs, they're just too small. Uh, the butchers don't deal with it. They just stay attached right there to the ribs. So I go in and cut those off first. We're gonna use those, cook those up. They're gonna be delicious. The next thing I do is go and look for my tallest rib bone. I cut in at the joint there where that cartilage is and we take off all of the cartilage and uh, little riblet pieces. Then I'm going to go to the ends and I'm going to cut off the little small bones. These are going into a pile. They'll be frozen and saved for later where I will come back and cut all of that meat off of those bones and that'll get ground into sausages. 
um, along with sometimes pork shoulder and pork belly. So we do not pull the skin off of the ribs. We don't want our ribs to fall apart. And honestly, it's, it's just not worth dealing with. Take the knife tip, score that, that film, and it will crisp up and cook and you can bite through it. It's perfectly edible. It is not a problem. Um, there's just no reason to go through all that trouble of, of trying to rip that thing off. Just score it. It'll let the seasoning go through. Life will be good. So we're going to go ahead and get all three racks of ribs done that same way. Taking off that skirt steak, cutting them down to St. Louis style, getting a nice shape to the ribs so that they cook evenly. And then we're going to season them all up. All right, like we said, we're gonna go ahead and grab some Ziploc bags and we're going to break down these extra pieces, throw those into the freezer, and we'll deal with those later to make sausages. All right, now all three of these pork ribs are gonna have the same base seasoning of our barbecue rub. Now we're going to serve them differently uh, depending on how they're finished off. So I'm going to go ahead and get these all ready with a little bit of that spray oil binder like we did earlier with the beef ribs and we're going to get our barbecue spice put on these. We're going to be adding a little bit of kosher salt, uh, not as heavy as we would with the beef. We don't want to overpower the pork. Um, plus our barbecue spice actually has a little bit of salt in it. Uh, we do that because we use these on potato chips to make barbecue chips. And there, I don't want to deal with having to add the salt separately. Uh, so we really use just a light coating of the kosher salt uh, to get us up to the amount that we need. So you can see there, it's not as generous as we do with the beef. So we'll get that on. We'll get this barbecue rub on uh, all the sides and everything ready to go. Right. So the last thing that we've got to get seasoned up is a piece of pork belly. Uh, that pork belly that we thawed, I cut it into two uh, four pound chunks. Those four pound chunks are in curing as bacon in the fridge now. And this leftover piece that was a little misshapen and some of the fat cap scalped off, we're going to go ahead and season that up. And we're just going to make some little pork burn in cubes out of this. Um, we're going to season this up actually with our Santa Maria seasoning. We want it to get away from the sweet pork, which the ribs are going to be, and have something a little more savory. Our Santa Maria does have brown sugar in it, so there'll be a bit of sweetness. Um, but it also uses ground espresso and more earthy seasonings, giving us a nice southwestern style flavor to this. Um, so we'll get this all seasoned up. You see there on the cutting board already wrapped in foil uh, is the pork butt that we smoked. Well, the half pork butt after we made sausage out of it. Um, that is actually wrapped in plastic wrap and then foil around that. Uh, that's the way we stored it after it cooled down. Uh, it's been in the fridge for a couple of days. And I've got a little small electric smoker that we never use for smoking but we use it as a warmer and a holding oven uh, because it will go down to 100 degrees. Uh, and most of the time when we're holding stuff, we really want to do that right at 150. Today, I've got it set at 200. This uh, pork butt and all of the sausages that we're going to be serving today, 
uh, and the macaroni and cheese are going to go into that and that will allow it to come up to temperature and be ready to serve when we're ready to eat. Hey, welcome to Phoenix Kitchen. Today we've got a little Saturday cookout going on and we've got the grill loaded up. We've got some cheese that's smoking. That's going to be delicious macaroni and cheese. We've got ribs, three racks of pork ribs, one rack of beef ribs, and then off of the pork ribs, we cut the skirt steaks. If you've never had pork uh, skirt steaks, it is an amazing piece. They're tiny. You just take them off those ribs, cook them up. Absolutely tender and delicious. Very juicy, great little cut of meat. And then after cutting a uh, pork belly down to make bacon, I had this little piece left. So I thought, why not some pork belly uh, burnt ends? So it's gonna be a great day. I got sausages warming up that we've made earlier. Uh, it's gonna be a fabulous little barbecue sample. We'll show you the plates later. All right, as promised in that little promo video, here come the plates. These are our beef ribs, nice and barky. We also have dry rub pork and sauced pork. The other pork we did with hot honey, uh, which is red pepper flake and honey drizzled over. We've got four different styles of sausages all together in there warming up. And of course that macaroni and cheese that we made with the smoked cheese. Now, when we do a cookout, we use quarter baking sheets instead of paper plates or regular plates. We line these with our butcher paper and go ahead and just pile everything on. You see there, everybody got at least one to two of each of the ribs, the mac and cheese, our coleslaw, a little pulled pork, just slices of sausages and pork burn ends. And then for dessert, a little homemade cheesecake turtle style here. Absolutely delicious. We're giving away a five piece cast iron lodge cookware set when we hit 1000 subscribers. All you have to do is like a video and subscribe to the channel to be entered in the giveaway.